La Lanterna, a spotlight in Italian football, is a podcast that dives into the beautiful game seen from the eyes of two fans from the oldest team in Italy's point of view. My name is Fabrizio Cardone, Canadian and Genovese, together with my friend Matt Killen, an American-born and Genoa fan. Every week, we'll tell you all you need to know about the only team you need to know about, Genoa CFC. Plus, we'll have guests and provide updates from around the magical world of Italian football. Benvenuti to La Lantana Podcast. Welcome to everyone. This is La Lantana Podcast, as I just said, episode 90. Welcome, everyone, and this is myself, Fabrizio. I'm just doing this all backwards, but anyways. And with my best buddy... Ciao, Fabri. I can't believe we're at 90. That's crazy. 9-0 or 91, if you can include the pilot, but it's unbelievable. I was actually thinking about it uh, earlier, and this is technically the third season, and we're more or less in the anniversary, if I'm not mistaken, for two years. Almost exactly, actually, because... It was sometime in April, right? I, yeah, I, I'm trying to remember the specific maps that we that we started recording, but it was definitely... It might have been in March, maybe? No, I think it was in April, though, because we did we had, we had like probably only three or four episodes before I was off in, in, in Genova watching the match. My brother got married in May, so I think it was probably sometime in April 2022. The year of the relegation? Yeah. Yeah, it was just before the derby, if I'm not mistaken, and then we know how that went. But still, and that was at the end of April. But yeah, almost, I, I should say, almost happy anniversary, Matt. Right. <laughs> Anyways, so match day 30, 31. And this was Genoa versus Verona. Yes, yes, yes. So I guess maybe we get right into it. I think, you know, there's been some chatter around this one. So we'll say it quickly. We win 2-1. The sentiment isn't, hey, we got three points. It's, what the fuck are we doing? Is Gilardino lost his mind? Are we asleep? I don't know about you, but I feel like maybe it's easier to have this opinion after several days after the result. But guys, come on, we got three points. I mean, I, I, I know, I think we have to address where these things are coming from. So let's talk about some of the things really quickly. But, you know, it starts obviously poor poorly for us. There is this really strange sequence that happens in the early moments of the first half where it was, I actually had to go back and rewatch it again because I wasn't sure if there was like some frustration among the players or what had happened. But if you remember what kind of went on, it was just this really sloppy set of play where like we were defending the ball in our half, but it wasn't really like any sort of goal scoring chance or anything close to that. The ball is near like the touchline. We had almost like three players around a couple of players from Verona. And if I my memory is correct, I know Badel was there. I think Macias maybe actually ended up getting a foot in and breaking up the play and passing it back to Martinez. And you see kind of, I think Badel or put his hand, maybe Sabelli, one of the two of them put their hands up. And I, I don't know if he was trying to communicate to Martinez to, to you know, be slow or, or what that was. But then Martinez kind of takes some time on the ball. The Verona player closes him down, gets a foot to his attempted clearance. And thankfully, it doesn't really cost us. It, it goes straight to DeVinter. Ball comes back from DeVinter to Martinez. He plays it again. And we have this just, this. it was just a very weird run of play it had this near like this strange blocked um uh clearance from from martinez that really shouldn't have happened then you know, all of a sudden we're on the break and goodmanson plays just a terrible ball actually which is very unusual for him um and i think ekiban fell down or something also because the ball was like so far behind him and in like two passes, Messias. Uh, Messias. 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 Yes, thank you. You're right. Yes, Akiban did fall down, but he scored a goal later. So not not in that moment. A anyway, all this stuff's going on. We have this terrible pass from Goodmanson. We have this strange back pass that s sort of seemed weird. We had this bad kind of way with Martinez handling the ball, and then all of a sudden you have Verona in possession because of where this bad pass takes place that just totally catches us. And but even then, it's still just it's it's weird. It's one pass, and then a really really long ball martinez completely we have to say it to be honest about it totally misjudges the situation and even with some defenders that were relatively nearby comes out tries to win the ball outside of the box you can tell he made the decision quickly but also at the same time probably too late but i don't think he should have come out at all and easily rounded one nil verona you see the goal the pistol arrow celebration and everything it's just like what the fuck just happened it was one of the worst i have not seen an individual sequence from genoa that bad 
in years. Like I, even the season we went down, I, I don't remember like an in like that type of. It was just awful that that period of of play. But when you look at the rest of the match, and I know like Verona have a goal called back towards the end of the match that I in real time. I'll be honest, I, it did not look offside to me. I think it was. I mean, it's VAR review, so they get down to that little centimeter difference. But like my own personal sensibility on those types of things, I don't really like that. Uh, I do in this case because it, it got us two points. But if you're a fan making a comment on the match and you're saying, you know, Genoa kind of slept walk through this match, those are the things you come to a little bit. But for me, I think you look at our goals. We won two to one. You look at the response that we had with Ekuban's goal, which I just, I was excited to see Haps finally involved in in a chance like that. I think he, seeing him pacey on the left, that's been something we've not really been able to see very much because he's been hurt. Obviously, it's good when Ekuban scores. And then, you know, in the second half, when you have kind of this, actually, Vasquez was very much part of the goal from a throw in almost. He throws the ball in, gets involved immediately, and kind of has this mazy run. I think the shot maybe got saved, and then Goodmanson is there. Maybe it, it got blocked or something, and, and Goodmanson's there to actually make no mistake. 2 1 to Genoa. You guys, it's away from, it's three points away from home. I don't know what we're really complaining about here. We had a, a really, really shitty, optically bad period of play that has really not happened all season and uncharacteristic. And if you want to gripe about a goal being taken off, you can gripe about a goal being taken off. But it was taken off. It was called off for offside. And even in the moment, Martinez put his hand up to say it was offside. So I, I just don't really get why we're all venting about this one. Stats are clear. Shots are almost even, but three shots on target for Verona, five for Genoa. Ultimately, that equals what their scoreline was. So that was one, two. Uh, sorry, I said at the beginning it was Genoa, Verona, but it was actually Verona, Genoa. So at the Bentecati. And possession, sure, it was uh, for Verona. Going back to what you said before, uh, at the beginning, it was a very bad rookie moment at the eighth minute when this action that you just described very well, and you had a Bani and Vasquez, uh, which were the first lines, mm -hmm. and they just couldn't catch the midfielder because he was, uh, sorry, the forward, which was just right in the middle between the two. Martinez does that horrible mistake judgment call it's a mistake i mean what are you supposed to do he did a great season and that was probably his worst mistake of the entire season or one of the ones that he did not was not able to to fix but soon after our reaction is quite good i want to also mention before the the tie there was also a crossbar from vasquez once yeah, again, yeah. Mm -hmm. he has six woodworks in the whole entire season which i think is the highest in city right now almost like a dome shape so it went up and went down touched the crossbar then around when we go for the for the for our action it was actually quite good as you said the ball comes from the left where hops picks it from messias in the middle and then he crosses it in the middle and ekuban did not arrive on time or did not arrive well there's this ricochet off of lazovic that serves directly ekuban which was already sliding from the action before and the mm -hmm. ball goes goodmanson one two with junior messias Richano Haps now, first time ball in the middle, it's in! Ekuban draws Genoa level! Lazovic involved in this mishap, but just before the interval, the equalizer for Genoa. And after that, it was a beautiful 1-2-1 uh, one, 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 one in the second half, as you mentioned. So this was a very well-built um, um ball that comes as you said from the sidelines from Vasquez goes into the box Ekuban serves it to Vasquez who gives a shot saved by the goalie by the way a couple of nice uh, saves also from their goalie so sure we won 2-1 sure it was a dirty match but Martinez other than that mistake the shots on goal were not dangerous well I can remember two or three saves in this one in specific about Vasquez which this goalie just did a miracle there the ball, he's not able to stop the ball, goes right on the foot of Goodmundson, mm -hmm. and the balls cannot be other than put in behind the net. Now Vasquez, Vasquez still going, Vasquez and Montipo, then Goodmundson slots home at 2 1 Genoa. The slalom from Vasquez, neutralized by Montipo, but he could do nothing with Goodmundson's efforts. All too easy for Genoa. 
So that's a 2-1. And uh, all I can say is after that, it was a good control. There was no major at all issues at back. And it's a, it's a good three points that we needed to bring home. And we did. I don't care how. We just did it. That's exactly right. So we're going to keep this first half short. Um, there's not much really to say other than the fact that in the next match, we're not going to have still... Uh, who's going to miss again? No Malinowski. Malinowski due to injury. Rategi seems to be able to be back. Um, Maturo is starting to uh, warm up with, with the players. He might not have any minutes, of course, but he's back with the team um, training. And as well, Rategi seemed to have recouped. And I guess we can go to our break and looking forward to our next match at Firenze. So we have two matches on the road and uh, in a sequence and it'll be on Monday. Ugh, ugly. Anyways. No one likes that. Yeah. Let's go to our break and we'll have a special guest coming right up. And now a short commercial break. My name is Fabrizio Cardone, and I approve this message. Bentornati! Welcome back to La Lanterna Podcast Part 2. So we're in our famous salotto or pub or whatnot to have a beer or have a coffee, depending if you drink or not. This time, with the next opponent, is Fiorentina. But instead of fishing around the world looking for English speaking, we do get an English speaker, but it's he's not native English speaking, meaning first time language or what, what not. But he is native to Florence. So what could not, how could that not be better to be a Fiorentino? Because I don't think there's any other team in, Fior, in, in Firenze, but, you know, we'll, we'll talk to him about it. So welcome to our pod, Gabe. Hello, guys. Hello, Fabrizio. Hello, Matt. Thank you for having me in your podcast. It's an honor. It's a pleasure to, to talk to some international Genoa fa- fans. <laughs> and uh, I, you're right, I'm from Florence. I'm Fiorentino, but I, I've been living in Canada. I mean, you and I are almost neighbor, neighbors in Canada and... It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah, we, uh, Gabe and I go back a while. I mean, not necessarily like decades, but a few years now. And uh, four, four years now, yes. I would yeah, say yeah. Four years, yes. So he lives up north, even further up north from our, our friend Ferdinando, who's the our, oh, our yeah. Ferdinone yeah. fan. So I'll let, actually, I'll let you speak about it, Gabe. So where, where are you about? I actually live in the Blue Mountains, which is tall in Budera, Blue Mountains, which is... Uh, Still like south of Ontario, like it's south in Ontario, South Georgian Bay, but compared to Toronto, it's uh, it's north. It's about a couple of hours north of Toronto, hmm. and I've been living in this area for the last ten years uh, since I moved to Canada. I casually got a job for the resort here, Blue Mountain Resort, and it was supposed to only be for six months. Then I really liked the area. I applied for college, and I ended up staying here and uh, getting a career and buying a house. So. It was supposed to be a six-month adventure. It became a life. So it's pretty, awesome. it's pretty important. And what keeps me close to Italy, except like, you know, talking to my family, it's Fiorentina. It's my love for, for not only Fiorentina, but my love for football, for soccer. Yeah, I call it football, guys. I cannot, I cannot okay. bring myself to call it well, soccer. We won't fight so you on that one. We're not... my, my love for calcio, let's put it in Italian. Yeah. And um, my love for Fiorentina, of course, because Fiorentina... Being from Florence, Fiorentina, supporting Fiorentina, it comes from generation in my family. And, uh, Forza Pisa. I, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, guys, it was, it was nice to yeah. talk to you. you, know, like, you know, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Anyway, so yeah, it Forza goes Stina. back to my, my mom. My mom is from that area, so I, I wouldn't, right. I still don't like it, but. I respect it more than Pisa, you know. No, I'm only teasing Gabe because uh, Tuscany itself is very famous for the fights or the hatred yeah. or the more. I, w- I would say more about the prideness of where you're from because there used to be all like city states or duke, oh, yeah. dukes and so on. So every province, every area was all by themselves. So they were all against everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, when you said when you said for yeah, Sorry, when man. you said Forza Pisa, I was about to say Forza Sampdoria. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, then we would have actually ended the podcast. <laughs> but you know, guys, like, but you know, guys, Pisa and Florence uh, no, do not get along. I mean, like, Florence doesn't get along with any with all the rest of Tuscany. 
because we, I have to say that people from Florence are usually arrogant. We think we're better than the rest of the of the region, which is true, by the way. So you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> <He's locked up. laughs> no, I don't. I I don't like. I really think we're better. You know, like and also, I'm people from Florence, from downtown, inside the the walls, mm -hmm. think are better. Think they are better than people outside the walls. I'm from outside the walls. You know, how many times I was called an immigrant from from the people inside the walls. You know, like so. <laughs> So you know, like that arrogance, our arrogance grow grows and grows the more you get closer to downtown Florence. You know, like. no, these are cool things because these are things that from the outside people around the world do not know. These things, like not mm -hmm. only the you know the hatred among the different cities, but even within the city, you can see this difference within the walls, as you said, and everybody outside yeah. the walls. And, and you know, I want to add that, like uh, as Italians. And, and, you know, like as Tuscans above, above all, like uh, we have zero filters. We don't, we do not have uh, politically correctness. Like uh, I can really, I can really call somebody from Empoli or from, you know, any other uh, outside, outside, you know, area of Florence, like a hillbilly. And uh, I would, I'm not gonna apologize for that, you know. <laughs> if you guys have to carry that, if I, if you guys have to carry, Cut this one, I understand. Like, I definitely, I have zero filters. I'm not politically correct. So, you know. There will be so, what are the provinces in... about that last section, so it's fine. It's no problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are the last section... Sorry. What are the provinces in, in, uh, in Tuscany? So, let's just... So, these are, like, the uh, major... Firenze, Capoluogo, I mean, main city of uh, Tuscany. Prato, which is... Used to be inside of Florence, but became such a big city that it became its own... Uh, its own I wouldn't call it province because in Canada, province is like the region, like, uh, you know, yeah. like Ontario. Yeah. I would call them counties because like the province in Italy has the same function of the county. So I would say there is the county of Florence, which is the main one, the county of Prato, Pistoia, Arezzo, Siena, Grosseto, Pisa, Livorno. Empoli, uh, you said that? No, Empoli is probably is, uh, is like a county of Florence, you know, like it's the last, mm, the last okay. town between... Between Florence and Pisa. Oh, Luca, yeah, but Luca is almost it's closer to you guys, Luca. Than, than, than there's, us, one, you know, there's, like. there's one more. There's one more. La Spezia, right? No, La Spezia. That's you. <laughs> that's you guys. You know, my my mom is up from Siena, half from La Spezia. So you know, like, but she is considered herself ligure for La Spezia for, for La Spezia side. You know? No, I know it's an inside joke for any, anybody listening. Yeah, and essentially, La Spezia. Nobody wants to wants it oh, for, um, if it was for me i would also give you massa carrara you know like that's the last <laughs> that's the last county of of tuscany you guys can take it you know but then we we <laughs> take the Areggio, we take all that stuff right no, i think the Areggio is pizza still so you know like uh, okay. <laughs> you would take part of versilia yes go yeah versilia that, well, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's okay with that i'm okay with that you know like <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. although by the way, guys, we joke. You know, if people are listening, we are very. We in Italy don't uh, do not have. I can I, don't, I cannot speak for Matt because Matt is, uh, of course, like American. But I can speak for myself and I guess for Fabrizio, for Fabrizio, because we we known each other for a while and we always joke like like this. We provoke each other, but at the end of the day, we can go grab a beer and be friends. Like nothing happened. Like I know here in North America, this kind of provocation is not well received or it's not understood, but we in Italy, like, and I'm not joking right now, but we can joke about somebody's death and not meaning and not meaning it for real. You know, like we're just uh, super, super, uh, I would say reverent uh, and sacrilegious maybe, you know, like, like uh, yeah. stand up comedians. Like uh, we are like, everybody's a Dave Chappelle or a Bill Burr in, in Tuscany. You know, love in it. Italy, you know? <laughs> we're speaking yeah. that language. Those, those guys are hysterical. I could tell you guys nice. were close because we started this podcast and you were immediately riffing on off of each other. Then, of course, of course, you know. Like, uh, we go, we go back. Yeah. And um, so, Gabe, tell us a little bit more about yourself with respect to so Fiorentino from Florence. But what do you do here in Canada for your Fiorentina? I, uh, for my Fiorentina, I do. Uh, I do have a, a YouTube channel. It's called Viola Canadese, means the, the Canadian Purple, and I've been doing it doing it since uh, 2020. I started just because I was bored during pandemic, and uh, I felt the need. The need. I was getting a bit depressed. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. The, the two years of uh, COVID, you know, like lockdown, had a toll on me. Yeah. And the channel was a way to to keep myself sane. I yeah. went in uh, lockdown as a single guy. Uh, 
broke up just before that and uh, broke up with my last uh, girlfriend just before that and oh. i i was like uh, rough i felt like it was going to be fine but i was rough so the channel helped me out and i met some great people like fabrizio being one of one of them like he was actually one of my first guest one of my first guests when fiorentina in general were like doing so badly and we were telling each other oh we're gonna make it you know like uh, Fiorentina and Genoa like they're good they're still good team like eventually we're gonna go back to glory and somehow it's happening but I remember that year Genoa unfortunately I think went went down or no I think Genoa was able to to stay up for the year but then the year after when went down to Serie B unfortunately I wasn't happy to hear that because as much as we joke Genoa is a very respectable uh, side that I, that I like to be honest and and uh, of course I'm also feeling for Genoa because like the current the current coach Gilardino played for years in Fiorentina mm, was our our bomber our our scorer when Fiorentina was in Champions League and be and like won against uh, Liverpool mm -hmm. in Liverpool so you know like big 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 thing for big things for Fiorentina so going back to the channel the channel started as a joke as a as just a way to connect to people and I did pretty well considering it's not my job considering I give it time just when I feel like giving it time so mm -hmm. I got up to almost 2,000 subs oh, wow. now it's been as yeah it's been been like that for for two years now like I'm not taking care of the channel so much so I also stopped for a while because when once we we were not in lockdown anymore I, I'd rather be outside and travel yeah. than than right. taking care of the channel but during the winter because there is less things to do outside in Canada I do take care of the channel a lot more now that we're getting closer to spring and summer I am probably gonna take less care of the channel so yeah. I always gain gain subs in the winter and I lose, lose them in the summer but it's not a problem it's a it's a yeah. hobby it's a nice way to spend some times when you're bored and and I'm really happy with what I created so what happened I, I've, I've looked around I've met you of course a very good my, friend of mine here in Genova sorry in uh, in Toronto he is a Fiorentino well he's actually from Milan but he's a Fiorentina fan then oh, I don't know him. Then uh, through you, I met, I can't remember now but, uh, his name. Uh, Matteo the guy, from Matteo. London. Matteo yeah. in London, Ontario, and he's another Fiorentino. Yeah. It's like, you guys should open a club or something. We did open a club. And thank, I always mentioned that to, to Matteo. Matteo and I mentioned, mentioned that uh, if we didn't have the, the spark when you recommended us to create a, a club, like before we wouldn't have come up with, the, with an idea like that and uh, the club is small there are not many doesn't matter supporters in, in ontario but we ended up being 40 30 or 40 people Pretty so good. it's not even wow. that small, that small like and yeah. we also added other other guys that that live here between toronto and niagara falls there is a, a nice restaurant in greensby which is close to niagara falls it's called casa toscana the owner luca is actually a fiorentina fan and he's from florence as well i didn't know him i actually went to this place a few weeks ago uh, before uh, easter and a great great restaurant guys if you're ever up in niagara falls i would i would go there because it's really good and, I see that, that's not yeah. too far that's not too far from my house, actually. No, it's probably 20 minutes from you, Dreams, yeah. 20, 25 minutes. So if, Matt, you're ever in Ontario, we can even go there for yeah, some I'm, food, you know. Like, I'm, uh, I'm still waiting for him, but... We got as, long, uh, as long as you guys don't mention Juventus, you know, like, or uh, Inter, or any... Any strisciata, you know, like... Uh, you know. So for whomever is listening, the strisciate. So I like to introduce Italian words. And uh, the strisciate means the striped teams. So specifically, it's referred to the team that I don't want to mention that uh, Gabe just said. Or the, mm -hmm. you know, the prison team. And uh, then you have Inter <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Milan. <laughs> Which are all like uh, different shades of the prison teams, you know, like, I mean, like uh, when you, when you come with stripes uh, above, not only, you know, two sides, like Genoa has two sides, as a stripe in the middle, but it's not like a, a, a jail stripe, you know, like uh, yeah. now going back to Juventus and the other Milan teams like Inter Milan and AC Milan, those stripes, uh, I mean, like uh, doesn't, I mean, the Black and white, yes, of course, like remind you jail. But even you know the other ones, there is still like some shading of of like uh, jail, you know. Yeah, it's true. It looks a little bit more like doesn't... jails to me, but yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, like the corruption is there, you know. And I speak yeah. for myself. <laughs> if, you got, if you if you don't no. wanna if you don't wanna associate with with this stuff, you know, I understand. Do we want to start with Comiso now? Comiso, we oh. just lost. Pre we just lost President Joe Joe Barone, you know. Like I. That was very sad. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, that was very sad. Like, uh, like nobody should die at 57 with, when your, your kids are, you know, like in 8,000 kilometers from you in New York. Uh, I had the pleasure actually to meet Mr. Barone last winter mm. when, I, when I was visiting Italy. I went to the stadium. I had a chance to be in the nice tribu tribuna because uh, a friend of mine is a journalist and he gave me a, a VIP pass for tribuna in, in, in Florence. And I had the chance to meet Mr. Barone and it was super, super nice uh, to me. And when I heard that he had a, a heart attack and uh, it was uh, kept alive with this resurrection machine, I was like, uh, no good. And uh, yeah. And again, like, because I, I live here in Canada and my parents are, are in Italy, like, uh, I cannot stress enough on how I would feel if my parents, you know, like, would feel sick and I would be here. Like, these kids were all in New York and they had to fly, to fly back to Italy, probably knowing that he was, wasn't gonna go, wasn't gonna, going to make it, you know, like, wasn't gonna make it so you know like uh, that's a it, really 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 makes my heart my heart like feel bad you know it's awful and it was kind of it was pretty sudden too wasn't it i don't i don't think it was something yeah. that was like you know you no. could even plan for uh, nobody you know there is the privacy nobody knew if uh yeah. director barone was had any pathology and i don't don't need to right. know that that's yeah. like uh, that's information for his family i but i uh, would definitely like, I mean, what happened was terrible. And it doesn't matter, even if it wasn't a Fiorentina director, like at that age with kids very far from you with yeah. your family across the ocean, like, I, uh, that's terrible, you know. It is, it is. And, and Fiorentina already, already lived something like that with the captain Astori, you know, like Davide, our captain in 2018, yes, when he passed away, years old. Like, uh, so we are not new to well. this. And like Italian calcio, Italian football, these last couple of years was, was uh, just, uh, uh, I would say, like, uh, just about terrible news because, like, uh, Sinisa Mihailovic died of cancer. And yep. uh, same with uh, Gianluca Vialli. So, from, you know, like a, like a legend for your historical rivals for Sandoria, mm -hmm. like, only because of pancreas pan cancer. And he had some, one of the most suffering cancer. Like, that was, it doesn't matter the team you support. Like, that's just terrible, you know, like, too, it is, too young, yeah. too soon. It is. Well, going back to Fiorentina, um, yes. I'm just changing topic because it's too too heart shattering. Yeah. Um, going back to Fiorentina, going, I'm recollecting back to what you were saying when we kind of more or less met. The season was uh, a tough. Then General managed to come back up from the bottom. We had a mediocre to low mediocre season, both of us. Uh, I remember that when that one was the fourth time or third time that Ballardini came back brought us yeah. up to 11th, 11th spot at the end of the season which you would think it's amazing but no it's just like we recouped those points right at the tail end and Fiorentina ended 13th that was the season 2020-2021 the year yeah, after yeah. though magically Fiorentina gets that seventh spot and collects the position for so this was 2021-22 the year we got relegated so that means that the year after you got into conference so and yes. that means that you're back in Europe for the longest and that was the year we got went down to to Serie B yeah last so, year we got eighth but we still got into the conference league before because Juventus was found surprisingly surprisingly cheating again but so <laughs> I didn't expect that at all you know like uh, so they gave us the Un the underline Europa. capitalized letters again well but uh, also capital S surprisingly you know like so surprisingly no sarcasm intended uh, none wink, wink wink you know like <laughs> you know like uh, you know like uh, <laughs> Week. So two years in a row into Europa. Yeah, conference. I don't consider it last year because last year was uh, we did very well in the Cups because we got to a final for Conference League and to a final yeah. for Coppa Italia. But we didn't do very well in in, uh, in the Campionato. So we got just eighth uh, with a better second part of the season than the first part. But we still didn't manage to get into Europe with the position, which again, it couldn't happen because Fiorentina doesn't have a team to play, doesn't have a good as good as that's a good team but not as good of, of a team to play in three different competitions same with this year by the way people were expecting to get champions league i don't know how like people were talking about going to the champions league so that's 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 mad that's crazy by the way but <laughs> Fiorentina has managed with this coach to have a decent team not great team because like the the transfer market were always difficult but with a coach that is still growing with a coach that makes 
many mistakes, but as a, a very good idea of game, of playing, we managed to get to Europe. And even this year, we are in semi-final of the Coppa Italia, quarter-final conference league, and we're still in the run for the six, seven plays. I don't think we're going to get it because the team is tired. And this is the last year of Italiano. We are in, um, I think you can feel it, it is the end of a cycle, the end of an era, but we'll try. I, I do, I'm not particularly uh, optimistic regarding getting six or seven plays. I think we're going to get in between nine and ten. Not because the team, not because Torino or uh, Monza or Bologna or for the matter this year, even Napoli and Lazio are better than us. But, well, Napoli would be better than us, but they, they messed up the coach. But that's it. But I think uh, you can really feel in Fiorentina the end of an era. They need to start again a new cycle. So I don't think we're going to go far in the, in the campionato. But I think we have a chance to get to another final list in the Cups, you know. So I actually preceded what I was gonna, about to ask you. So Italiano, Sorry, no, you yeah. think... No, no, that's good, actually. Uh, that means that you are most likely certain that Italiano is going to leave. Rumors have... Oh, yeah, he, said, he, 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 he told that to the... To... To the uh, to the management, like he told Commisso, he told Barone before the for you know, like he passed away. He told uh, Prade, wow. our uh, sportive director, that was a uh, well known, uh, you know, like uh, some of our like uh, sometimes our journalists give give news that are not necessarily true, like uh, Goodmanson, for example, that was supposed to come to Florence. I never believed it, by the way, but you know, like uh, that. Fiorentina approached Genoa. Uh, I was never, I never believed that Genoa would give up a good player, at the, uh, like his best player, probably at the, at the at middle. Fiorentina tried with a 25 million offer, and and Genoa said no, we want 30 or more, which is fair, by the way. But the same journalist that I say hi, Flavio, like you, he has a very good relationship with it. With Italiano and with the and with the management of Fiorentina, so he gave the news and Italiano confirmed it. That he talked to the to the uh, management and he he considers his his adventure in Fiorentina concluded, which is fair, by the way. And I think we are on uh, we are looking for another coach right now for the next season. Any idea who could that be? I mean, rumor says that Pal uh, the um, Palladino is uh, the the top the top uh, runner, you know, the favorite one. There was an idea, Gilardino, because I think he's a good coach. But again, I know that he just started to speak with Genoa about uh, renewing the contract for another year because he's uh, he's almost uh, at the end of his contract. Maybe, but you know, like he, coaches are different, like than than players. So I'm sure, like he would be, like he was an important. Important player for for Fiorentina and Champions League. For, he would love Fiorentina, but I don't think it's the right time for him to change because the, the project at Genoa seems growing. It seems like you, your new management compared to the previous one to to Preziosi has a better idea what to do with the team and how to go in the transfer market. So, despite I would like Gilardino, I think it would be better for him to stick another year with Genoa and then see what opportunities open the, the year after, you know. Like, my favorite for Fiorentina would, wouldn't be either Gilardino or uh, Palladino. My favorite would be probably an impossible an impossible call. I would love Unai Emery from, from oh, yeah. Aston, Villa, Aston Villa or Maurizio Sarri, just departed from Lazio. Yeah. I don't think uh, any of these coaches are are possible for Fiorentina because their ambitions are higher than, than what our management can have right now. So now another rumor is uh, Daniele De Rossi that is doing very well, who is doing very well in Roma. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think, because before people say, oh, this guy is talking about a, a coach that won't go to Florence. I agree, but Roma hasn't offered yet a, a renewal of the contract to, to De Rossi yet. His contract doesn't expire next year. His contract was a six months contract between January and, and June. That's it. So the rumor says that because he was very close, he's very close to Burdisso, one of our managers, and, and um, Prade. They both come from Roma, from Roma side in the in the previous year. So he's very close to them. Apparently the Rossi is like a son to Prade, our other our sporting director. So voices are that if he doesn't sign a renewal with Rome, with Roma, I could come to Florence and he would be my my pick. He's not only a good, a good coach, but he has the charisma of a champion, you know, like charisma of a world champion. So if I had to choose between the, the potential one, I would choose the Rossi. I know it's almost impossible, but my pick would be the Daniele De Rossi. I think it's an interesting place that Fiore, Fiorentina are in right now, because 
obviously, and that's probably why Italiano is saying, I think I've done what I've done here because he's gone to European final. He's taken the club into Europe in multiple seasons. There, you know, that's relatively comfortable, I'm sure, for you guys with mid table right now, possible again for Europe. I, I, I don't know. I haven't looked actually how close you guys are to the last spots. Um, you guys are close because we are still, uh, we also had, we also have one less match than you guys have because. When oh, that's right. Barone passed away, like we didn't play against that's Atalanta. Right. Atalanta is a strong team. I don't think we have the favor of the we have the favor of them of the match, but we already beat an Atalanta two twice this year. Like what the the first round in Campionato, Fiorentina, Atalanta, in Florence, we won three 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 two, mm -hmm. and now in Coppa Italia we won one nothing. Uh, the first the first uh, round of the yeah. semifinals, so we can win. In Bergamo is more difficult. Uh, I don't. I think we have the favor, but it's not impossible. But right now that we have a one le a match less than you guys, you guys are not that far from us. You guys, are you have 38 points and mm -hmm. we have uh, 43. So right, right. Yeah. You, guys, you guys are doing quite well. And you might get, you're definitely safe from like, I know that you, the target, Genoa will say the target was like avoiding relegation. I think the mm -hmm. Genoa is a better team than, than just avoiding relegation. I'm not saying for Europe, because Europe maybe next year, but... Right. You know, middle of, middle of the chart. You know, like I never thought like Genoa could, could relegate. Like, I mean, how can you how can you relegate with players like uh, Retegui or uh, you know, like yeah. uh, Good, Goodmanson? But the same with Messias. That a lot of people criticize Messias. Yeah, you used to play for me, Milan. Like Vitinha, great, great, great call by the way. Like from your uh, from your management, that's a great player. That's a great you know like uh, call. But even the goalkeeper is good. Like you know like Martinez at the beginning of the year he seemed like. Uh, Stumbling a little bit, but now he's safe. Like uh, he improved. Like so, Gilardino did a great job with the with the human material that he got, and uh, I think the players adapted very well. So it's gonna be an interesting match. Like like you guys lost quite of a large loss. Like the yeah first the game first of match against us, but first <laughs> game. But like uh, I think it wasn't fair for you. That was the first game for Gilardino and Saya. A lot of the players were new. Like Fiorentina was. Uh, very very confident that match because we were at the third year of italiano you know like then you guys got to got so many good results like you beat in roma lazio you you like tied with juventus with napoli you know like you got you guys got a good result so i don't think this is going to be a an easy match for us like i am hoping to win as, as as much as you guys hoping to win as well but in florence uh, i think we still have a little bit of a favor but it's not it's an open match i don't think uh, it's going to be an easy I don't think it's going to be an easy victory for Fiorentina. I don't think it's going to be that easy for Genoa to score us in Florence, but it's a close match, in my opinion. So I guess let's go right into that. So what we usually do is like to go into the predictions. So you already started some analysis with that. Give us a little bit more and also right at the end, tell us also what you predict the actual result will be. I don't, I don't do predictions because I don't know if you guys are familiar with the show The Office. I'm not superstitious, but... I'm I am a little stitious. So, but I'm not superstitious. I'm a little stitious, you know, like uh, yeah. as Michael Scott, as Michael Scott would say. So you know, <laughs> pun, you know, like a joke intended. Because uh, who doesn't love The Office doesn't love life. I'm I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. but that's a great show. I hope you guys like it too. You know, that's The Office. One hundred percent. Anyway, anyway. So I don't do predictions, but I can. As I was saying, like Genoa comes from. Very confident uh, second part of the season. Very, very solid. Uh, lots of victories, lots of points. Yeah, somehow stumbled, you know, like some games, but it's normal. It's the first year in Serie A for a team like, like that. Gilardino is still growing, is still learning as well. So, understandable. Fiorentina did a great first part of the season. Then the second part, we, we have like our average is the, like uh, rele relegation. Thank God we did a lot of. We had a lot of points in we were fourth in the chart in the at the end of you know like at the end of the um, how do you guys say girone di andata at the end yeah, of the like first part of the first season night. yes first, yeah. first, first, first half first, yeah. Night, yeah. first yeah, half yeah. of the season like uh, the second part uh, we go to be 10 so yes uh, it's very disappointing we're not very confident this this time so although i expect the team to honor the game, honor the campionato until the end. I think there is more focus on 
cups on like the conference league and Coppa Italia. Tomorrow we are playing against Victoria Friesen. Yeah. Wilson, whatever it's pronounced. So I don't know. Like the match is gonna be Monday, right? Next, the upcoming Monday. I guess mm -hmm. Monday at uh, at 6 p.m. Something like that. So, I don't know. We definitely, but we're definitely gonna be tight because tomorrow we are in, we are playing in Czech Republic where, uh, against the Kirk Wilson. You guys have the whole week to prepare it now. I think Fiorentina as a, overall is a stronger team right now than Genoa for you know players. But Genoa is not that far because again, for example, your striker Retegu is better than our strikers. We have like Zola. Belot, Zola that used to be good last year, but this year, egg zero. And you guys even wanted him. And probably, I would have rather have retag with him than Zola. But <laughs> Belotti used to be a player, you know, like he's a, he used to be called the Gallo. Now he's yeah. a Capone. He's not. He's not a Gallo. He's a Capone. You know, like uh, you don't understand. He understood the, the joke. Like, um, how would you put it in English to me? To make people understand a bit so like Capone, no Capone is like the older version of a of a of a cock of a like you know like uh, not cock as the bird no, yeah, no, not yeah. the Gallo the kid show the roof, you know, like, yeah <laughs> shoot I apologize you know like. <laughs> anyway uh, so the rooster so like the root the Capone is like saying uh, turkey dinner something like that so like he's not the rooster anymore it's just just a, a turkey dinner, you know, like that's what we call him right now because it's an next player. A, a lot of people were excited over oh, getting the Gallo Belotti. Nah, nah, like one goal in 10 match of when we score five goals against Frosinone, and now everybody scores against Frosinone. So, you know, yeah, all due respect to Frosinone, eh? you know, just saying that I am. Um, I don't know, like, um, our striker's choice this year wasn't that good, like, we got the Beltran, but he's uh -huh. not a real striker, he's more like a trick, like, um. Half a striker, like three quarter midfielder, you know, like so. Three three quarter quarter. Yeah. Very good, very good player, but not a striker per se, you know, like he was a striker in Argentina, very different situation than, than Italy, very different defense right. style, you know, like in Argentina, defend player, play, defend, defenders play to anticipate the, the, the striker, not physically assault the striker. In Italy, defenders physically assault the striker, like he's uh, mm -hmm. shorter than me. In Italy, we say that like uh, uh, he, he, his weight is like 50 kg bagnato, means like 50 kilograms wet, means like super light, you know. Like, so. and he's also as tall as uh, in Italy we would say un cazzo un barattolo. <laughs> can I translate it? Can I translate it in yeah, English? You know, like uh, a dick and a can. You know, he's tall as a dick and a can <laughs> together, <laughs> stuck together. <laughs> <laughs> so you know like sorry guys for being so so not politically correct but like i don't like to sweeten the feel i'm very straightforward so oh, i love it you know i love it <laughs> so <laughs> i'll throw it at you win tie or loss uh again no no prediction i, I tried i tried would it. say that i would say that you know like in google the, the prediction i would say 50 50 percent Fiorentina won, Fiorentina victory. Ten percent, uh, yeah, ten percent draw. No, twenty percent draw, and the rest is like your victory. You know, like so. It's close game, close match. Well, he did answer. Open, it's very... a win for Fiorentina. <laughs> Not really, because like I said, fifty percent of chances. I know. Twenty, I know. twenty tie. And then 31 for Genoa, which is pretty high. And Florence is not like playing in Genoa, you know, like uh, that's so true. We are, yeah. a, we are a pretty warm stadium, a pretty warm, uh, pretty hot supporting squad, you know. So. Yeah, definitely the atmosphere there. I mean, I think um, I definitely agree with Gabe that, that Fiorentina have the edge on the squad overall. I think it will be also a competitive match. It, it definitely feels, thankfully, like the beginning of the season was more of an unusual match than than something that was a bad sign to come. I remember that entire thing. It felt like there was this big celebration in the literal first, ma first match of the season, Gilardino playing up against Fiorentina. How romantic is that and all this stuff? And then we just get crushed. And I, it, that's not how I think this will go at all. But I, I feel somewhat more pessimistic about Genoa's chances in the match. Um, partially, I think, away from home is, is one of the things that factors into all of that. But we've been in actually like a not a terrible run of form. If you talk to the group chat, I think they would convince you otherwise. We've had some strange matches. This most recent one, although a win, had some kind of wobbly moments. We didn't look all that great against Frosinone as well. Um, you guys are solid. If I cannot, Matt, like you guys are solid. Like you don't play a spectacular yes. football 
football like for example italiano tries uh, too hard sometimes to play a spectacular like a tiki taka football but yeah. most of the time if you don't have the good striker it's sterile because you put a lot of cross a lot of effort in 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 you know like assisting the the striker but then you never score so like you guys don't go for that you're a little bit more practical more like uh, yes. allegri for example not as not as ugly as, as, not as negative juventus, as allegri, allegri, as juventus, but, but, but don't mind the structure just mind the result a little bit more Machia- machiavellian which i do appreciate that in gilardino so and fiorentina suffers that type that type of team so you know like uh, i wouldn't like being spectacular doesn't mean some people are oh, I, lo- i love the sport i want to see spectacular game we're not all the man the manchester city of guardiola we're not all barcelona like you gotta you gotta bring home the results so like what gilardino is doing i do appreciate it a lot it's honest. it's 100 true and that's the thing that i think is interesting because it's it's sort of bizarre fabri and i are kind of bemused sometimes by it because i think there's been recent unrest somehow and it's like guys this is our first season back to Serie A, and we've had all these great performances and wins and and gabe you're exactly right that what gilardino does is what gives you the most hope in the this match in that we rarely have defensive lapses we did have one against Verona but that was a very strange play and everything about that entire thing was weird and we have enough competency up front where we can that was our problem for so many seasons before we went down save for the random lone player that we would get from somewhere we just have the time didn't have guys who could score or we needed Goran Panda at like 45 to score goals for us or something so I think in, in this match specifically I, I still worry just a bit only because of what Fiorentina has I, I think the match may end up 2-1 Uh, to Fiorentina. We don't have Mal- our only real absence in this one. I think that's of note is Malinowski. Uh, Maturo also. Ooh, will they, be. That's that's another great player, Malinowski. I'm he's actually glad that you guys don't 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 have him playing because uh, like he's really good at scoring from outside the, the the area. So you know, like I am so I'm so scared of his of his shooting skills. So thank God he's not there. You know, like no offense, no offense in, in 10 to 20 Genoa. Fans, I'm saying for my side, you know, like that. I'm scared of him, so I really, I really don't think uh, Fiorentina is going to have an easy, an easy time against Goodmanson and Retegui. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right about that, and I, you know, I, I would imagine that Genoa will line up sort of similar, honestly, with one change maybe to how we did against Verona. We had Ekuban and Goodmanson starting. I would imagine you'll see Goodmanson and Rotegi, uh, to your point, Gabe, at, at the outset there. But our, our midfield kind of composition of Messias, Badel, and Friendbrook, which is kind of interesting that we've been deploying Messias in the midfield. I think we're probably going to see that again. And we've seen see, Malinowski like, sometimes in that way, too. So. See, like, uh, what I think it's a little bit the weakness of Genoa is like, uh, yeah, you guys have a good defensive phase, a good defensive process, but the, the men themselves defending like the players mm. not not the best player like B- Bani good player but like with a lot of limits you know like uh, yes. like I I like the Colombian play yeah Colombian player what's uh, yeah what's his name like you guys have Colombian defender uh, like, you Colombian. think he may be Vasquez Vasquez is he Colombian Mexican. no is he is Mexican. Mexican oh Mexican oh, I thought it was called my mistake Like yeah. really, really Vasquez, really, really good yeah. defender. Like he was on Fiorentina's radar a few, a few years ago before you got actually got you guys actually got it from Cremonese, I think. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, like, was he in Cremonese? Well, Vasquez? Was Cremonese. Was loan. We loaned him there. Where did we get him from? Was he at Cremonese before then too? No, he was from sure, like from where? In Mexico. Yeah, but it was loaned to Cremonese because the first year yes. in, in Italy was playing for Cremonese when Cremonese was in Serie A. And so, like, he's a good defender, but Bani and uh, who's the other one that you guys have? Because you guys defend, defend have a three, three, de- yeah, three man like defenders. The, the winter, the winter. Yeah, the Belgian. The winter's player. good, but like young, you know, like yeah. so. And Bad, Bad, he also played for Fiorentina in his prime. Yeah. So, like, great player, by the way, but very slow. Like, he's very yes. fast, think, quick thinking, but very slow. Yeah. And it was the kind of like playmaker, like he used to be. Not the same player, but they used to be in Fiorentina. Used to be the the first year he came to substitute Pizarro. It was like the first bench substitute for Pizarro. So different kind of player, but same kind, similar intelligence for uh, you know like being a playmaker. I mean, Pizarro was a phenomenal. Like, Badel is good, too slow. So I think Fiorentina, the advantage is between your defending man and Badel. You guys are a bit slow there. So if we catch you. If we actually, if we do high pressing, you guys might be in, in, we might get some difficulty, but that's my, I think that's your only downfall there, like that. You don't have very fast players that, uh, in between 
midfielder and defense, you know, like the only fast is very fast is the winter probably. Yeah, the, the winter and maybe Spence or Haps if we see them on the fullback side, but even Sabelli, our other opposite fullback, isn't exactly yeah. the player. Yeah, Sabelli, know? very good player as well. Not, not bad player, but again, sometimes you have some lapses, some amnesias, it's or you know, true. same with ba same with <laughs> Barney, you know, like uh, yeah. Sorry, sm small parenthesis. So as I remembered, Vasquez is uh, coming from uh, from Mexico, from UNAM, which is Pumas or Club U Universidad, mm -hmm. and he came uh, general on loan with a, the, the the right to buy or obligation to buy. I can't remember. And uh, so then general purchased him, bought him right out in 2022, the year of the relegation when we went down. Then uh, Vasquez needed to stay in Serie A in order to play with not to lose, not to lose value not to lose value uh, tra trading value of course yeah. Yeah. and and also in order to play with his national team so we loaned him out to yeah. Cremonese even though Cremonese did very bad he still did decent didn't do amazing yeah, yeah. but when he came back from the loan mm -hmm. out to Cremonese he became the superstar that he has become I think it was actually sometimes though with sometimes in Cremonese he also played outside of his role because he was also play back back wing you know like fullback mm -hmm. which yeah. is not he can do it but he's not he's not his main position he's actually a, a center you know like a defending a central defending so you know like i think he also didn't do very well because like the defensive phase of uh, of him of the cremonese wasn't good at all you know like and he was was pl playing in a in a position that is not its own position his own position you know? Back to you, Matt. I think I think it's all really good conversation because it, this is sort of the it's where I think the match is going to hinge. I think Gabe's exactly right, and you know you remember the first match of the season again. We're, we're talking about it's not going to really be like this, but we had such a problem getting the ball out as well. We couldn't complete passes at the time because I think we hadn't figured out the right way to transition forward. And uh, in that match, your midfield completely took over the game when we played and we couldn't we couldn't well, get it. That, that game uh, have, like the, the, the let's say the most important player of players of Fiorentina were in very good shape like Biragi yeah probably the best shape he had during during the year uh, Arthur Arthur then now there's a parasite in Fiorentina because he has he has so many physical problems but that that game he, he played like a uh, freaking Pizarro or Pirlo He's like uh, I'm not joking <laughs> Cayo, Cayo de, first match uh, in Serie A ever coming from our youth team, he completely destroyed your wing back. Like uh, that was a was a, um, a mix of things that led that led the game to the to that situation to the result. I don't yeah. think this is yeah. gonna be this is gonna be a closer a closer match. You know, like uh, more op more open to different results. You know, like I think we still have a little bit of ground more ground to win, but. It's not going to be easy again because now Retegui and Goodmundson understand each other very well. Yes. So there is a lot of, there is so much, um, I, would have, I would have put like, they understand each other. At the time, there wasn't much understanding, in my opinion. Yeah, it, it, with the, we saw it too. The first several matches of the season, it was just harder for, for the two of them to really click. And then you really saw that come in, I think, mm -hmm. in the latter part of the first half of the season. But yeah, yeah the, it, the it, scene, it, it, I got the word, the synchronization between the two, you know, yes. like the scene between the two was like not good. And now they sync perfectly. Yeah, it, it felt like there wasn't enough service and connection there but it's it's there now and it's the best thing i think we have looking forward to getting all three points but i do think i i would my prediction would be 2-1 to fiorentina with goodmanson continuing his, his goal scoring form but you guys can sell him a 50 million at the end for 50 million at the end of the year <laughs> I, th I think it may happen actually unfortunately yeah no that's uh, he's a great player like and i haven't seen a player in a long time coming from serie b and adapting so well to serie a that you get already in like dub, double digit scoring, you know, crazy. And he's not even a pure striker. Yeah, no, he's a he's a kind of like three quarter midfielder, half a striker, you know, like yeah. So so great how do I how do I see this match? Um, you're you're done, right, Matt? Mm -hmm. I'm good. All the words of both of you mixed together all make sense. They're all correct. Uh, I agree with all of them. Just re-saying the same words, perhaps in a different way. Fiorentina is not in a good run of form lately. Um, I'm just looking at the last five. It's the exact opposite of what happened to Genoa. So they had one win, two ties, then two losses. While Genoa, on the contrary, had two, uh, two losses. Well, one of them was obviously that Inter one, which it was not even should not even be considered as a loss but two ties and then the one 
let's call it ugly win per se. A win is a, a win is a win, never ugly. I agree with you. A win is a win. Doesn't matter if it's pretty or ugly. Uh, the, 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 it's three points, and that's all what counts. And that's what happened to Fiorentina in the first match against us. Regardless of how badly we played, they managed and they deserved 100% those three points. We're playing at Firenze. Everybody knows it's very difficult to do anything there. I honestly, if I had to uh, play it, this would be one of the triplette that I would uh, uh, see in in uh, in, in the, this match here because it could technically go all three ways depending on how well uh, Giladino designs his schematics and or tactics. Gabe is right. Like the team, the Fiorentina team seems tired. They are going to be playing. We're recording today on Wednesday. They're playing tomorrow for, for the Conference League. In and Czech Republic. With- so we're also the three... The trip, you know, like, yeah, it's a short trip, but it's still a trip. So, you know, it's like, still a trip. You're right. And and then on Monday, playing with us. Then on Thursday, again, they're playing at, at Firenze, but still, again, the, the second uh, leg for, for the match, for the conference quarterfinals. Yeah. So I do see that they're going to be very concentrated a little bit more, in my opinion, for the conference league quarterfinals, both legs compared to the match against Genoa. Having said that, that does not mean that they're going to just bring in the Primavera and just say, hey, what yeah. the heck with it? Of course not. Italiano, as also Gabe confirmed to us earlier on, he's on the way out. So he's just trying to pull in the best that he can for his next gig, most likely, mm-hmm. perhaps, maybe against w- with Napoli. But that's not why... Not too I'm sure, asking. you know. About Napoli, I'm not too mm-hmm. sure. But most likely, it, that's why I'm saying it's the, it's, it's going to be a tripleta. So I, I said that throughout the different pods what a tripleta means means it could go any way a win a tie or a loss depending on each one you're looking towards obviously for us we're looking from a general perspective how do i if i have to put something there i'm a little bit in on the fence perhaps with a tie or a loss for genoa but because both of you said uh, Fiorentina win. I'm going to go for a tie. No, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't say Fiorentina win. I didn't say that. Like, stop stop putting words in, in my mouth. Like, I didn't say that. <laughs> you almost caught him, Fabri. Based on the numbers, you're favoring more the win of Fiorentina. How's this? So, yeah, I'm... but it's my, my number is on a tie, you know. Like, uh, if I had to bet, I would bet on a tie, to be honest. I'm not superstitious, but I'm, I am a little stitious. So there you go. That's why I'm going for the tie. I think that both teams have will have opportunities. It will not be an easy match for either way, either side. Mm-hmm. It will be a little bit entertaining, but at the same time, it's going to be a rough match. And I think it's going to end 2-2. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. It will be on the goal scoring sheet then, Fabri. And on the goal scoring sheet, I will definitely see Retegi. He needs to uh, pump up to make sure that he is going to catch and keep that spot for the Euros. But I oh, always... He's, he's keeping it. Like, who's in Italy? There's no, there's no better striker right now, to be honest. So. <laughs> and he, he's obviously improving and improving match after match. Also, thanks to Gilardino. And I do see Messias doing the second goal. Oh, okay. Junior. Junior. And what about for Fiorentina? Who's scoring the two goals for Fiorentina? Capone? I'll leave that, I'll leave that to you, Gabe. <laughs> no, 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 no. Also, because we don't have great scores this year, like even neither last year, but those two terrible players of last year, Jovi Jerka and Cabral, the terrible players, like a bubble Cabral, but. Maybe, uh, maybe Kwame for, for all time's sake. Uh, oh, okay. I, I know he's not a great of a player, but he's, he's one of my favorites. Because before Genoa, I used to play in my home team. Like, I'm from Florence, but like a suburb called Sesto Fiorentino. Mm-hmm. The team the team of the suburb, Sestese, play, played in Serie D, which is like the the after, the first uh, non-professional league uh, before going to the... Pro- like the, It's like the last non-professional before going into professionals. Like, say, Lega Pro mm-hmm. is the league upper to Serie D. And, he, and Kwame played in Sesto Fiorentino for Sestese before going to Genoa. So, you know, like, uh, like he's, uh, he's my pupil, you know, like, I, I, you know, like I, I love that player. He's not, a phenom- he's not a great player, but he's a good player. And he always puts like 100, 110% effort. Like, uh, you guys probably miss him in Genoa because he was really good with, that, with you guys. He was well. amazing. Amazing. Yeah. amazing. And also, guys, I want to tell you that like, I have so much respect for Genoa because Genoa had some of my favorite players. Like, I have... Uh, my first, one of my first bosses in Italy, 
when I worked for Sky, Sky, you know, Sky Italia, the 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 TV, you know, like the I was a sales rep for them, and my boss was a Genoa, was from Genova, yeah. and a, Gen- a big Genoa fan. Like uh, he gave, got me a jersey, a Milito jersey from the year the Milito was. Uh, like principe like for me principe is like uh, after ba- after batistuta uh, there is principe for me you know like, that's amazing yeah go alberto so i mean i don't support genoa but i have the, the utmost respect for for the for the team and for the history you know plus you know purple is some kind somehow like a mix between blue and red you know so. <laughs> you did tell me that once you did tell me that <laughs> it's true <laughs> well like if you check the rainbow and the color chart that's what it comes you know okay, like, we'll maybe not the same rainbow, tone of got- you got the other one that has the, all the colors of the rainbow too, right? Oh, the Chiglisti? Yes, the Chiglisti. <laughs> the bike riders. We call them the bike riders. The bike yeah. riders. That's the aqua fresh. <laughs> but oh, to, just to wrap it back to what you were saying, I think the other uh, goal scorer could be either another former ex, which is Mandragora, or Ooh, that, that no player no. that with us becomes like the best player ever for Fiorentina, which is Bonaventura, which is... Or Biragi, because Biragi scored with you guys or in the six nothing. Plus, you know, it's gonna be difficult because you guys was one, and I agree, we got one kind of revenge. Like you guys go in two years that you played us like two and a half years, six nothing, and then four one. I mean, I'm sure you guys want some revenge, you know? Like, uh, I don't want to use that word because last time I used that word, it didn't work well. Um, I, I, I okay, you guys was ben, vendetta. Retribu- retribution, retaliation, you know, something like that, you know. It like, still won't work because that's what I wanted against Frosinone, but it didn't happen. But it, at least there was a tie, so I can I can say Vendetta, so at least there'll be a tie. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, v, though. The, the head-to-head for is not... Vendetta. Yeah, there you go. The head-to-head, no, it's not looking good. Not so, in the last years, anyway. So I, I think... No, guys, you know, it's, it's, it's a very... This time, I'm, I'm not, not being superstitious, but it's very open match because we play tomorrow Thursday and it's gonna be a tough match because it's quarter final of the European Cup I still remember also Girardino scoring to us when he was with Fiorentina all the time <laughs> anyways we actually so we actually traded him traded him to you guys when he was stopping to to score in fact he didn't score much in Genoa either you know like uh, he did okay he did okay not yeah, I mean, he didn't do bad you guys gave us Carja Carja and we got you Girardino I think we got the best out of that. Well, well you you got you got us Kaja plus money, you know, like we're not gonna give out Gilardino with that. Plus Kaja stayed six months and then disappeared. Like I think he went back to his family, didn't didn't show up to training, like it's like what the heck? Like he was he was actually good in general, like he was a good player in general. Okay, so, yeah. you know, like yeah. yeah. In Siena I did very well as well. So, you know, like I don't know. People come players come to Florence, they think they go to the to the greatest and then they don't wanna stay right. Too bad, you know. That's fine. the greatest what? To the greatest capital of of. of uh... No, they think they come to a great team because at the time we were like stay, staying in Champions League. I mean, like you, you, are you provoking Fabrizio? All of, how are you long have you guys been? Oh, you're talking about the years with Antonioni. Is that what it was? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Remember that, like, not even ten years ago, we were fourth in the chart with Montella. We got like four, three times in a row, and then fifth with the uh, with the. Uh, Paulo Sosa. So not even ten years ago, we were like top f- top five uh, top five team in Italy. Then what happened after? I don't know. I don't want to talk about that. But you know, like, oh, you mean how long I... have you been? How, how long have you have you been far from Europe? Like with the, with Preziosi, too long. Except that year with the, with the, uh, Gasperini, that great great coach, by the way. You know, like no fun, no fun. You know, like he, we don't like him in Florence. But if I have to speak like uh, without being a Fiorentina fan, great coach. And he was right. there of Milito, Tiago, Tiago Motta and school, so, you know. All right. So I guess we're at a wrap. So if we, so first of all, thank you extremely, amazingly for being our guest. It was the longest that I wanted you on our guest, but obviously last year it didn't make sense because we were not playing against no. you. This year, the first match of the season didn't come out properly timing and so on. And I no, guess because you, I remember you contacted me because you say, Gabe, can you come tonight? And I was I was out. It was a bit of a little bit of a the same day. A little bit not enough notice. So you know, like, I <laughs> cannot confirm or deny what you said. You know, like what you not even what you said. What you show is this going video? By the way, matter it's only no, audio. It's only audio. Only <laughs> audio. <laughs> oh, come on! Are you are you kidding me? I was hoping that people could see what Fabrizio did right now 
we descend and uh, you know like show the show the world uh, what kind of person you were the one that was busy not me <laughs> i don't know i am i again like i cannot confirm or deny what you what you are showing me you know like, uh, but by the way by the way yeah. these listeners like he's uh doing a little bit of a trick with his hand that i don't think it's uh i cannot say with my words what is mean you know like so <laughs> anyways gabe thank you again uh for being our guest uh if anybody wants to reach out to you both to for for talk talking to you about fiorentina talking about your your show and or the the fiorentina club how can they reach out to you guys uh the best way would be to write a comment to one of my under one of my videos uh, the the channel is called uh, il viola canadese which means the canadian purple or you can reach me on uh on Instagram, Gabe slash, sorry, no, not Gabe slash, Gabe underscore uh, Viola underscore Canadese. I'll tag all your accounts as I always do. Okay, thank you. Thank oh, you, sir. Okay. I appreciate that. No, you haven't, you haven't come to my channel for too long now. I haven't got many, many guests recently because I was more focused on, on uh, like doing short videos uh, by myself. But like, uh, like I still have to, I need to have you guys again in my channel. Like it's, logical that i get you you know maybe maybe uh maybe the game after the after the game or something like that you know for sure. Sure. or uh, we'll see or you know when when we buy goodmundson and gilardino from general you know <laughs> <after the game. laughs> you will get no i don't i can like i don't do anything like it but i go get i am a guest at pastor frentina it's not my channel like that's actually pastor frentina is owned by flavio say hi because he's actually a very good journalist like sometimes you know As a journalist, you can have some real news and some that are not so so true. You know, doesn't mean that that it's not like so. You know, like I think there was a lot of uh, misunderstanding. I'm not trying here. I'm trying to make peace between the two factions. You know, like. Uh, so. <laughs> Anyways, you've a man. You've a man. You go. There you go. <laughs> so we can thank all agree. You, and thanks again for for being uh, our, again again our guest, Gabe. Uh, follow Thank us. you guys. It was a pleasure and an honor, you know, like to be here. And I'm gonna follow more the podcast because uh, I come from podcast initially, and I have to go back to podcast. You know, it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, for anybody listening to us, we're always on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Drop us a like, any comments or whatnot. But never forget, always and forever, forza Genoa. Forza Viola. You've listened to La Lanterna, a spotlight on Italian football, a podcast powered by Genoani Siresta. Thank you for listening and see you next week.